kids. Another Glenn Yaps video. This one's more just for fun. Um, took a couple of days to organize my workbench and go through a thousand screws, bolts, and nuts and trying to organize my uh, little, what do they call them, storage drawers. And uh, get ready to get back into some modeling, some plastic uh, model cars and stuff that I wanted to build and haven't had time to finish. I was going full bore there for a while, but had to take time off for uh, uh, other things. So we organized. I know it may not look organized to most people, but it's organized for me. Um, Usually I had a whole bunch of like wires and stuff and electronics, but I put those in storage. I want to really get into the modeling. I got a couple of new airbrushes and and uh, I want to really get heavy into that again. Um, so we cleaned it all up. Um, the old storage drawers and stuff, as you can see, there are. They are getting full, but I have a lot of drum stuff in them. But I wanted my modeling crafts and stuff to be somewhat handier than being stuck over on that side. So I've got like, you know, funnels for paints and cleaning cloths and wipes. Um, these are other trinkets. These are little bottles for, for paints, uh, little bags for parts, stickers. These are all different kinds of parts to make uh, what I call rat rod models. I keep all my stock parts in there. And the same with the chemicals. I wanted to be able to grab them. I had them spread all over this bench and I wanted them in a central area where I could just kind of grab them. I got a couple of different trays and Kind of made it look a little bit more presentable. Storage jars and parts and parts up here. Um, and just trying to stick it, stick to the modeling. Organized down in here. Um, it's a small area. My house is small to start with. Um, but people laugh at how much I utilize space. Um, like right in this ceiling, like look, like my head is at the beams right now. Right, it's at the beams on half the basement. So, you know, I lose two feet of storage space. So you have to make the best of it. As you can tell, I've got drums down here. Any standing drums, when you see them all in pyramids, like they're, they're actually on rolling bases. So I can move the whole bass and the drum set moves in five seconds. It's just like a wagon. I just pull the drums around. Every drum set down here, except the ones set up, um, pretty much are on rolling cases, except for these two right here, but they will be. That's because they're new additions, or fairly new additions. But yeah, I want everything to be able to move out, move so I can vacuum and keep it nice, nice. Anyways, it's my little work area. Um, I got my toolbox. Uh, there are other tools in here that I use for modeling and simple fix it stuff. Um, a basic drill there. I've got a Dremel, as you can see right there. Can't do modeling without a Dremel. And this one here is a little bit of a mess, but I know where everything is. I'm just charging this old clunker here, this old screwdriver. Soldering guns in here. And uh, so we got these tool kits here. The soldering gun underneath. Normally this is not in here. I'm just keeping it in, the in there for charging purposes. Um, in this drawer here, is uh, a squirt gun. It's been with me since I was a kid. I actually used this to uh, 
squirt water on the model cars when I'm doing these weathered rusted looking models you squirt a little bit of water with that and salt and uh, it's a, a heavier grain salt and uh, it's a whole trick on how to do it and you airbrush over it and it, once it's all dry it looks like a rusted car and I don't mean that the salt rusts it what it does is it gives the patterns in the paint um, to look like rusted edges it's pretty slick um, I still use um, car primers, regular car primers for models. I find it the best. The best is plastic coat. Almost impossible to get in this damn city. They used to carry it for years and years and now it's, it's very hard to find. It ticks me off. I use uh, lots of thinners. I love lacquer. Lacquer thinners, mineral spirits. Also, you can thin paint with certain brands of paint with uh, Windex. Most people don't know that. Um, and an airbrush is really great with Windex. Um, you just got to make sure you get the right type of paint. Um, my usual little, these are little parts boxes of some model parts. And then you got all your supplies in here, my paint brushes, extra containers. These are paint mixers. You put an end in and it'll mix it all up. We got, uh, this is pretty slick for all the modelers out there. This is a whole cutting set for cutting plastic. Um, all the parts off the trees. If you want to customize the body, cut things apart glue one body half a body to another body yeah do all that fun stuff toothbrushes you gotta have those for modeling also um, especially if you're redoing some old models you want to be able to scrub them down um, so I got two of these mixers they are a must-have um, this is some of the airbrush collection I have these are well one well, two parts ones in here and some good ones this one is one of my favorites this is uh, uh, badger stuff right in here um, also I used to do a lot of pinstriping with this it's got a wheel on it paint wheel so that's pretty cool I haven't done that in years. My hands have gotten so shaky I can't do that anymore. But I keep the tools nonetheless. A couple other airbrushes, jars. Um, paint. Um, putties. This putty sucks ass. It's the worst putty I've ever used. If you want to build model cars and use putty for seams, use this. Elmer's wood filler. It's fantastic. Don't let anybody tell you different, because I've used it for years. This stuff here, somebody recommended it and said, try this. Waste of money. So, and uh, this a friend uh, gave me for fusing plastic. I've tried it a few times. It's pretty slick. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's electronic with a battery thing, and yeah, it's pretty slick. Never heard of this. and. And it's great for gets, just getting the part set if it's a pain in the ass part. Just give it a zing and away she goes. Lots of popsicle sticks. These are a couple cars that are being restored. And there are parts in bags here. Some of these cars were donated. This one is one of mine from a kid. We're turning that one into a gasser. That's a fun car. Again, more parts. And a couple of cars in here being redone. Most of them I put in plastic bags. Um, this one here is one of the first cars I ever built when I was a kid. Of course, it wasn't very good, so I'm redoing it. I don't always redo them, but that one's a rare kit. Can't even find it anymore. A Mickey Thompson Pinto. 
Uh, what do we got here? Oh, the same drawer. These are tons and tons and tons and tons of decals that I've actually collected since I was a kid. Some of them don't age well, some do. They're worth keeping for the designs themselves. Again, a couple of cars. Oh, actually, this one's this one's kind of done. We want to clear coat that. That's an old one. This is an old one. This is all my sandpaper in here and some parts. Massive parts drawer. Everything's labeled. Engines. See all those. Believe me, this is just is a a little bit of them. More stickers. This is a lot of tires down here too. A lot of instructions down in here too. Gold leafing. I like doing some gold leafing on models. I used to have a sign company with my brother Rick. And uh, we used gold leafing a lot. Lots of fun. And this is uh, oops, another airbrush, a bigger one. And just some odds and ends down here. Um, we've got another stack of models up in here. Um, these go deep, like two or three deep. Um, I've also got some dies in, in there. It's hard to see in there, but I have a bunch of newspaper in here for doing masking and stuff. And I just picked up a couple little drawers. These are containers, I mean, for doing parts. Um, like I say, I need newspaper for masking, especially in my uh, paint booth. As you can see, I aligned the paint booth. Um, because it's plastic, you definitely don't want it to uh, get this paint on the plastic because it'll never come clean. Now this may look kind of weird, but this has been with me since I was a little kid. My mother made this for me. And I will never ever get rid of it. Uh, she made this for my model paints and stuff. And some of these paints you can't even buy anymore. These are old school lacquers. They don't even make lacquer anymore for testers, uh, model car paints. Yeah, and some paints and other little stuff. There's even an old soldier in there from one of my tank models. Um, I just hang on to this stuff because I'm nostalgic. And I love my mom and I love the stuff that she did for me when I was a kid. She knew I was staying out of trouble by building model cars. And, uh, yeah. And she uh, built this for me to uh, further my addiction to plastic models. And I love her for that. And these are, oops, something fell in there. These are cars that are from way back when I was a kid. They are going to get, not overhauled, they're just going to get cleaned up and uh, fixed up just a little bit. And uh, we'll go from there. So I'm just going to get this out of the way for a sec. And we'll get this back in here. Alrighty. Back when I was a kid, we didn't have cool things like this. This is pretty slick, actually. This comes off. But you can put parts on here. These little clips come out. And you can put whatever part you want on here and paint it and paint it uh, in the clip put it here to dry this is another spinning device this is for for um, 
painting the bodies of the car. So let's just use this for an example. This is a friend of mine's vehicle. And you can spray it. It's actually pretty slick. And if it's not high enough, you can use this. You know, if you want it near the lights. Like this is a spray booth. And then it's got an exhaust fan that sucks the paint out the back. It's got a motor on it. It's a switch right there. Goes outside. I have a special exhaust pipe outside with a with a vent that closes so you don't get critters in it. And um, I use one of these for holding parts also. Um, you can hold it like this while you're airbrushing and the whole body be in there. It's pretty slick. Never had those things when I was a kid, so. Yeah, I'll put that back. Yeah, so. Never had the spray boost. We're basically inhaling all the paint. One of my favorite airbrushes for modeling. This is an old Binks. Um, back when airbrushing in the 60s was um, crazy. Everybody was doing it. This was the airbrush most people used. And um, I've had it for quite a few years. This is a friend truck he gave to me missing some parts I cleaned it all up and and uh, trying to find a windshield for it somewhere or we'll make one old monster truck and we got supplies here air hoses I got different air hoses that's my main one but I have a brand new one that came with my wonderful let's turn the light up here I want a airbrush. Those are killer airbrushes. A cup on them uh, bigger, that's what I wanted. I'm not quite a fan of siphon feed airbrushes. That means they suck the paint out of a, a jar. Um, for, for doing models, there's a lot of paint waste with that. And uh, yeah, so that one there basically is a gravity fed, means the cup is above and it it falls or drips into the air cavity and gets pushed out. So you can get um, more paint flow with uh, less air and you can get really sharp fine lines with that. I've got a few of them and uh, I've got one with a smaller cup just for doing small little areas. Uh, fantastic. So, and fairly inexpensive. I mean, airbrushes can run up to thousand bucks, depending on what you want. And we got lots of parts and stencils. We got a whole wheel stock here. This is all these boxes are different types of custom wheels for making um, hot rods and rat rods, and I love all that stuff. We got wires for doing exhaust and stuff I find I'm uh, not exhaust uh, spark plug wires use phone line that's good for that um, like I say we got washer fluid mineral spirits water in the back we got lacquer and pledge pledge liquid pledge yeah, many don't know this but this here you can take this Pour it into your airbrush without mixing it. Pour it in your airbrush, spray your model, and it's a clear coat. Works fantastic. You can put as many coats on as you want to the desired effect. You can wet sand once it's dry and do it one more time. It turns out fantastic. Um, I'm into a lot of uh, restoring matchbox cars. 
This here is very expensive paint. You can see red line shop. This is Spectracolor. This is the type of paint they used on the original Hot Wheels. Um, so I'm doing a few Hot Wheels. Um, like I say, that paint is expensive. So when you screw up, it's not a good thing. Um, again, way in the back, lots of model cars. And uh, you'll still see some drum stuff, like down here, little pearl lugs. These are the guts to an old silver tone amp that I'm building or restoring. But anyways, this is my compressor for just airbrushing. Um, it sits there. I take the power plug. I've got this power bar that goes across. And I just plug it into one of the slots. There's the air hose uh, for a, a, the bigger gun. Not all the airbrushes take the same size of hose. Um, and you connect it and away you go. Your airbrushing. Um, this is for the light. This little wall wart, I call them. So you just unplug it. There's a switch for the light too, if you if that's easier. But and then down here, these are other projects I'm working on. Um, Get some light down here. These are all uh, Matchbox and Hot Wheels that uh, I'll be painting very shortly. I kind of lost track of doing this. And we're going to do some fun stuff with them. Some are just random custom jobs. Some are going back to the original. These are all toys from Matchbox and Hot Wheels I had when I was a kid that I kind of overplayed with them and uh, they kind of got foobarred we'll say and again these are some cars that uh, we'll be getting some love or customizing in the Matchbox and Hot Wheel family so that's my little work area. You'll see some music stuff like kick ports and drum beaters and stuff, but oh, here's another little trick. You can take these long, these are for cooking, and you put. Uh, Double sided tape on, you can tape your part, your plastic model part to it and hold it and paint it. And then see these little holes? Um, you can put them there just to dry. They like say these are inexpensive but it's a slick deal. So I use a lot of these and popsicle sticks. So here's another trick too. This thing's going to fall over, I can feel it. Anyways, you buy plastic spoons and you airbrush the spoon to see how the color goes. See if you like it. See if it's too runny, too thick. And uh, it's an expensive test rather than spraying the model and wrecking it. Um, basically, uh, do a test on a plastic spoon. I got some cups back here. These are all like applesauce cups. I love applesauce. But I save all these. Or I have people save them for me. I literally have tons of these. Best thing for mixing paints. Also for storing little parts. And uh, like I say, I've got a stockpile. So. Yeah, so everything is the way, uh, or at least right now, the way I want it for doing my uh, model cars. Just want to make it easy for myself while I'm sitting here and, and I got the tunes, got the PA, you know, got my music. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. This is a storage, more storage. 
these are models uh, in progress and a couple of parts bags of, from parts of models from when I was a kid but the models that I'm working on currently are in that bin the ones coming up are those and uh, I literally have hundreds of models I will probably never build them in my lifetime but uh, most of them are sealed in storage totes um, I am not kidding when I say hundreds of model cars I, they are packed solid in totes in my garage and in a storage area in the basement I just love them um, some of them are worth a lot of money some of them are just sentimental and that's the way she goes anyways that's my little space like I say it's pretty crammed right now normally we don't have a bike in here that's my chopper bike my 1971 banana seat bike I love that more than my cars I have more fun with that bike than anything and that's my all my drum work area this is all a workstation that that rolls right out and it's got tons of parts on it for fixing all the stuff I've collected since I was a kid drum heads and and these totes here are cleaning material and uh, electronics yeah it's this side of the basement is like I say it's crammed full but I like it like that I don't like open space I'm not into open space when it's a work area drum area practice area it's like why well, have space I'm not here to show the walls I'm here to gather stuff that I love to do um, and love to make noise with so thanks for watching